As I was introduced, my name is Jan Bulas and I'm a PhD student in uh, uh, Krakow in a Gelonian University and I will be talking today uh, about a cultural situation in uh, Upper Tissa region. Uh, it is a region uh, located on the border of four modern countries, uh, Hungary, uh, Romania, Ukraine, Slovakia and Poland. Uh, uh, and uh, the cultural situation in this region was shaped by two main factors, by the migration of the population of the Przeworsk culture to the south, which is quite often correlated with the migration of the, uh, at least some of the Vandal tribes. Uh, and, and this migration is um, quite well represented by the sites with the Przeworsk culture material dated to the time of the second half of the second century. Uh, also the burial uh, grounds as well as settlements. Uh, and the second factor uh, is uh, uh, Markomanic Wars uh, that I will be also talking a little bit about in a minute. Uh, in the last few years, few new uh, burial grounds have been excavated in the region, not only geographically speaking in the Upper Tissa region, but also uh, in the southern part, east-south part of Poland, in the Sun Basin, which is thought to be a region from which population of the Trevor's culture migrated uh, to the uh, Upper Tissa Basin uh, and was connected strongly in the uh, next uh, centuries. And what is interesting, uh, what we find uh, on these burial grounds are uh, quite typically for the Trevor's culture, uh, graves uh, furnished with uh, military inventory. But what is, uh, this is the example from Rankovce in Eastern Slovakia, wonderful burial ground excavated by our colleague from the Vehodoslovenske Museum in Kosice by Jan Rakos. Uh, and what is interesting, those graveyards contains a lot of military equipment, but to be more specific, uh, Roman military equipment in higher numbers than on the other territories uh, of the Przeworsk culture. Uh, this is the example from uh, Prusek, and uh, another example, uh, maybe uh, the best one, uh, from the double uh, horseman grave from Pakoshovka, that is in the same area as, as Prusek. And, uh, uh, to be even a little bit more precise, uh, the, when, I, when I say Roman military equipment, I mostly uh, mean Roman swords, but not only. And just to express uh, the importance of inflow of the Roman military equipment to this region, I just present you the maps uh, after Biborski and Diaka that shows how much of those uh, swords there are in the region of the Przeworsk culture, there are even more in the mean of percentage by the grave, number of grave in the Upper Tisa region and in the southeast of Poland. Uh, so what was the relation and what was the role of the Przeworsk culture population uh, in the contact between uh, Romans and barbarians in uh, that period of time? We know quite a lot about the relations between other barbarian tribes uh, from the Danube region and the Rome. I don't. I won't go into the details. I will only say that this, uh, the influence of the Roman Empire grew through the first and second century. Uh, this influence can be uh, represented by the famous emission of the uh, Sesteri from the time of Antoninus Pius with the inscription on the reverse Rex Quadidatum, which means king gave to the quads. Uh, so as we can see, this influence was quite significant. Uh, and, the, and the relation between both sides were mutually, to simplify, quite good. However, it all ended with the Makmanic Wars. Uh, and uh, it seems that the Vandals and more precisely, as the Ingi uh, took advantage of the conflict in that region 
and migrating uh, south, uh, they, uh, they found themselves in the situation uh, in which a lot of people were in, <coughs> at war with empire. But what we can say about those people of the Trevor's culture and about the Vandals is that, <coughs> going back for a second, is that uh, the Roman historians, I'm sorry, uh, they uh, actually, I think, confirmed that uh, those tribes were also interested in striking a deal with the Roman Empire. And uh, as we can see in the fragment of Cassius the Roman history, uh, as Dingi received from the Emperor Marcus both money and privilege of asking for land in case they should inflict some injury upon those who were then fighting against him. And that means Makomani, Kwadi, Sarmatians, uh, or other tribes not specified in that fragment. Uh, and those deals can be, uh, perhaps, it's just the idea uh, um, reflected by the find from this double grave that I showed you before, uh, seal box, the only one so far known with the archaeological context from uh, from the territory of the Trevor culture. So what is the mechanism? Uh, the uh, population of the Trevor's culture <coughs> migrated to Upper Tissa region and then there is the exchange of, uh, of goods and exchange of uh, services on both parties. And all of this resulted, as we think, uh, in massive inflow of Roman goods, especially in an uh, inflow of Roman silver coins to the Trevor's culture. It was quite lately demonstrated by uh, Arkadiusz Demoski and Krio Mizgin that uh, possibly this inflow of a uh, really huge amount of silver uh, Roman coins, firstly, um, uh, firstly appeared on the territory of the Trevor's culture and later they were distributed to the other areas, uh, to the Baltic areas in the area of the Vilbark culture. And also the, the culture, the, the, to generalize, the culture of the, the Trevor's culture is also uh, transformed on uh, other levels. Uh, we can see the uh, the um, grow of uh, significance of uh, the horseman, which is represented by the percentage of the spurs in the graves. And specifically in Upper Tissa region, we see in the third century after the migration and, uh, and in the time of a kind of stabilization for that region, a transformation of material cult culture, which is <coughs> best represented by the appearance of the materials that so-called uh, Blazice Berek uh, pottery production centers uh, were the exact copies of the products uh, made uh, uh, by the Romans were, were made. Another example are the uh, polygonal jugs made on the, in those centers in the eastern Slovakia that, um, uh, as our colleagues from Slovakia think, they, uh, they are copies of the metal vessels. There was an example of Sueso Horde. Uh, and also, of course, the elites were influenced uh, by this exchange of, uh, of ideas, uh, as, as also can be demonst demonstrated on the example of Ostrovani, and uh, uh, where we can find also quite a lot of Roman objects. Those uh, elites probably benefited from the mentioned control of the land in the Upper Tissa region, which became, in my opinion, a very good um, trade route to the north. So adding to this uh, picture, we can see that after this exchange of goods and services, there is a transcultural diffusion, Romanization of the barbarian elites, uh, but also a barbarization of the Roman army as the it was a barbarian warrior society that also influenced the Romans. And quite quickly, uh, as my time is running out, um, there may be an indication in the very short but important fragment from Dexippus, uh, which shows us on the different levels how it all 
could have happened, maybe, uh, as uh, the children of the Vandal elite could have raised on the Roman territory, and therefore, I believe, uh, be Romanized at some level. Uh, it, it, the fragment demonstrates, again, the importance of the cavalry in the Roman army, uh, and the uh, importance of the uh, trade deals uh, between both parties. The 4th century is much more difficult, uh, as we lack of well-dated material, material from that area. We do not lack material. We have a problem with dating and the differentiation uh, in dating of the materials dated to the uh, phase C2 and C3. Uh, quite a lot of objects are dated to the both phases. So there is a problem, methodological problem, but we can see the decline of the pottery production centers, the mentioned pro uh, production centers, a decline of the Roman influences. Uh, before we see copying of Roman uh, ways of making pottery, for example. Uh, it's not the case anymore, at least from a point of time in the fourth century. And we start to see the uh, appearance of the cultural elements from the, in other regions and from in other peoples, uh, for example, from Chernyakhov culture and from nomadic cultures. This is just the uh, example, a representation. A pottery very similar, uh, well, the pottery which can be connected with the Chernyakhov culture that was not previously uh, made uh, in Upper Tissa region, dated quite well with those keys. And possibly the explanation is not only uh, universally a Roman view, as it is the Jordanus, and it combines uh, views of both barbarians and Romans. Uh, and uh, what is important in that uh, fragment is that it can maybe explain in part what happened and why there is this decline of Roman influences and appearance of the, of the new influences from the East. Uh, it possibly happened because the Vandals lost the conflict with the gods and lost uh, their superior uh, in that region position uh, in later, uh, in, in, in fourth century. Uh, so, there are the conclusions. My time is uh, finished now. You can uh, read them. Uh, but what is important and what I would like to underline is that uh, I think uh, the role of those people in the Upper Tissa region and this region in the 3rd and the 4th century was so far a little bit missed and, uh, uh, and uh, not fully understood and it had a huge uh, importance in shaping the cultural situation, not only in the Upper Tisa region, but also in the region north from the Carpathian Basin. And thank you for your attention.